Hi and welcome to another Tabitha's Glass Emporium YouTube video. Now this month on Fuse Glass Digital Resources, they're doing Scrap Month. I love this group, I think it's a fantastic um, group to kind of share information on and um, I was been thinking about uh, re revamping one of my old videos. Now last year I did a video with fibre paper, doing what I call fibre paper casting, doing kind of words like this, this is love. Unfortunately it keeps getting broken and we keep having to re um, refuse it back together again so it's a bit of a blobby love now but we still love um using fiber paper and cutting shapes out and using scrap glass in them to make words and other shapes now i've done other videos there was an easter one i did stuff slotting together where i've used this technique now at the time i was um uh contacted by another glass artist whose ebook i had mr paul tarlow he felt i'd copied his work um, he was quite threatening and I took it down because I just don't really like the conflict but since then I've spoken to quite a few people who have said it's not really his technique, it was out there before him. I'm not claiming it's my technique either but I think it's a useful technique so I want to share it with you. I'm sorry Mr Tarlow if you're offended by this. Um, I am personally say live and let live. I've promoted your books on my YouTube videos and one of them has been seen 43,000 times so I hope in the balance we can kind of you know let it go. Um, but using that technique is a fantastic way to use up scrap and I had this idea because I think the British NHS is one of the you know best organisations in the world. It's looked after me um, and my family, it's given me two fantastic kids when I've been sick, it's looked after me and although I live in Croatia now I want to kind of go big thumbs up to the NHS and I thought oh wow I could do a 3D rainbow using fibre paper casting and here it is. So this is using two layers of six mil fibre paper stacked on top of each other and then making this quite thick chunks of rainbow using the scrap glass I had around. Plus for me, because I have a few marini, um, I've added a few marini in there too, but it's mostly, I would say 95% just scrap glass and you get this fantastic, beautiful rainbow. So I'm going to show you how to make it. So to start this project off, I took two layers of six mil fibre paper and glued them together because I want this project to be nice and thick so it will stand up on its own. If I didn't, if I just use one layer, it probably would stand, but it's going to have a nicer base. Plus, when you're doing this fibre paper casting, you always, it sinks down quite a bit. So you need to put more in it than you would normally, um, you know, if it was just solid glass. Um, so... I glued those together, then I made this template. So this template was just a rainbow, two A4 sheets glued together. And on one, I've taken the colours um, red, yellow, green and um, purple. On the other um, one, I've taken orange. Uh, now I've lost my colours, but you get the idea. It's every other colour. So one will have one, two, three, four um, archways on it, and the other one will have three. Um, and I worked it out to make it sure it would fit on my kiln shelf my hobby fuse the kiln shelf nicely. So kind of work it out to your kiln shelf size that you can see here. Then we cut it out and then you end up with this. So on, on this bit of the rainbow, you've got the red, then you've got the yellow, um, orange. See, I can only do this by doing Richard of York gave battle in vain. So Richard red of York, oh, orange, York, yellow, battle blue, oh, green. Green, you get the idea guys. I'm confusing myself now, but I am going to make sure, and I'm going to write it in here before I start, what colour should be going in what one of this, because so, I want to get make sure I get it right. Um, I'm now going to fill up using whatever I've got. I mean, this is a scrap project. This is the great thing about this fibre casting. For me, it's about using up scrap. You scrap glass, scrap vitriograph, scrap whatever you have around. The key to it is to put a lot of clear in. And I said this in the past video I did that I'm afraid I had to delete you need to put about 50% clear to um, whatever um, scrap you're, um, you're putting in here, even more. So I'm going to cut up a load of scrap Tecta and then find the different colour scraps to put in the, um, in the different pockets. So I've got a load of smashed up Tecta here. I'm going to always start with a little layer of Tecta in the bottom. It doesn't need to be a full layer, but I just think it's best to start with some Tecta. Um, and then I'm going to put some um purple scraps on top so i'm just using this is um, neo lavender and some plum 
And then once I maybe put a bit of this in, I'll probably put a bit more texture in and then a bit more scrap and then a bit more texture and kind of build it up like that. Now you do want to make sure you're getting right into the corners and you're getting a good kind of um, layers in here um, to make sure that when it casts, it, you know, it casts right down into the feet of the rainbow. So you can see with these three we finished and you can see how much hopefully we piled them up. So you want to really, really pile them up. We've used the um, blue gel glue. I'm always trying to show the bottle. This is from Bullseye. I love this stuff um, just to kind of help stick stuff together and piling up. And there's quite a lot of clear. I'm always trying to put chunks of clear on top because this is a nice optical effect um, at the end. So, I mean... Um, there are different methods. I can you can put little bits at a time, or with this we've chopped up a load of you know scrap, put that in, and then we'll start arranging kind of prettier pieces like the marini and little bits we're using kind of on top at the end. So that's your kind of two different um, options and ways of doing it. Um, so we're going to finish this off, and then we'll show you when it's done. So here it is, all filled. I'm ready and to go in the kiln. Um, we filled them up as much as I possibly could. It's a bit like kind of. Funny puzzle where you're like piling them on top to try and get as um, as high a level as possible. I'm going to do quite a, a two hour bubble squeeze on this just to really give it a chance to, for the bub or the air to escape and it all to kind of settle down into the moulds. Um, after that, once it's been fired, we'll have a look at it and if it, I feel it needs more in them, we can then put more on top and do another firing. But I'm hoping we can get it sorted in one go. So this will go in now and we'll see how it is when it comes out. So here's the kiln open after it's been fired. Um, there are some areas that aren't quite full enough. This one here, um, and then mostly in the corners. So for me, I'm gonna put a bit of li extra little bits of glass on these areas. And before I disturb the fiber paper at all, I'm gonna put it back into fire again to um, get, get these bits filled up. Um, but on the whole, I'm really pleased with the colours and how it looks. I think it's going to look really nice. It's got a nice amount of transparency in it, um, which will let the light through when it's sort of up against the light. Um, so this will go back on for another firing, filling these little bits up, and then we'll see how it is after that. Guys, you want to be careful that you're not just touching or moving the fibre paper without masks on. This stuff does let off fibres and it's not good for your lungs. So please, please make sure that you've got your mask on or when you're just, if you're doing what I'm doing, we'll literally will not touch the paper at all and we'll just put little bits in the corner and we'll wear a mask anyway when we're doing this. So here it is out of the kiln, having had its second firing. Um, I'm now gonna put a mask on and get it out of the fibre paper to make sure that I'm really protected because there is gonna be a lot of dust from this fibre paper. So once you cleared up all the fibre paper, I would leave your mask on. I recorded this before, but unfortunately it didn't get recorded. No, one, someone didn't press play um, or record. Uh, um, so you'd normally have your mask on and you need to clean these up. So imagine this is still dirty and got all the fibre paper sticking to it. Um, I use this little grinder to do the inside and I run it kind of like this along the grinder. And then I flipped it over as well and did it the other side. I found I kind of needed to do both and even at a slight angle to get everything off the inside um, and then you could do the outside here if you wanted but I'm for myself because I've got a flatbed I did the outside over on this flatbed now then I also did the feet now it's quite hard to get the feet flat because you're not only getting them flat this way so the smaller ones I can fit both feet on at a time but it's also flat this way so it's not only you know if you've got a bigger one you're, you're getting the you know you're getting it flat this way it's also um flat this way and it can be kind of you so you need to look down on it or maybe use a spirit level to really make sure it's flat and then grind um but after it's fire polished you'll probably need to grind again and then even maybe when the feet are glued grind again to get the real stability so here they are all ground now on the inside edge as well as doing it on the kind of grinder i showed you i also went over it with a diamond pad just to kind of um, try and get it a, a finer ground edge so that when it's done it will be fire polished nicely and on this edge I went over it with the 400 on, on the 400 on the grinder so if you've got 400 you want to take it down to that now to get them so they stand up it's quite tricky particularly if they don't fit on your grinder like the larger pieces because it's not only getting them kind of if you're if you can imagine that's your grinder and you're doing it on the edge you want to make sure that this piece is it's level this way but it's also level this way 
So it can be a two man job with one person making sure that it's directly upright and the other one making sure that it's directly that way. Um, for the bigger pieces though, they're a little bit wobbly. So I have cut these triangles, they're six mil glass. They're just gonna go in my fire polish, which I will then glue to the back edge like that and will just help give it a bit more stability so it's less likely to fall over, particularly on the large one. I'm finding it virtually impossible to get it. To, it, it does just about stand up, but with a couple of those on, it will be perfectly stable and much less likely to get knocked over. Um, so I'm gonna put those in probably for the um, the big kind of, what are we doing? Um, red, orange, yellow, but the green one I think is pretty good on its own, although I might put some in for that anyway, we'll see. Maybe I'll put them in for them all and then I'll try it out. So we'll have a look and um, get this in on a fire polish, long anneal because they're thick pieces um, and we'll see how it all is when it comes out. Um, everything's now out of the kiln and we now need to glue the feet on like this. This is one I've already done. Um, it's actually slightly trickier than it looks because if you don't get everything at the right angle, they have a tendency of falling forward. This one's even a little bit top heavy and I'll probably grind it a little so it sits, sits back properly once the glue's gone off really well. Um, this is the glue I use, everyone. Please take a screenshot. Uh, it's the Aerodite Epoxy two-part crystal clear. You mix it in equal quantities for about a minute. It goes a bit cloudy, it'll then go clear, but time yourself a minute. Do it a minute, minute and a half then you need to use it and use it quickly before it goes too sticky. Once it goes too sticky and you try and use it, you will not get a good join. You need to rough up your edges. So I've ground these and I've ground a little bit here so that you get a good um, join between the two things. You do not want to stick shiny glue to shiny, um, shiny glue, shiny glass to shiny glass uh, ever. You don't get a good join. So I'm now gonna mix this up and glue it. It's a little bit tricky guys. Um, you can see this one I've done already. It's actually slightly top heavy. Um, I'm grinding everything at slight angle so that it sits slightly back. I'll probably let the glue go off and then I might put it on the grinder again. You may want to make your feet longer. Um, it's up to you how you want to do this so it works for you. It's not as straightforward as I hoped. Um, you know, I come up with these projects and then I'm like, oh. Um, so I'm going to glue these on and then probably grind the feet down so everything stands up nicely. So here it is all finished up. Um, hindsight guys, it's always a great thing. You have the joy of my hindsight. I would have made these feet bigger. Um, it's still a bit wobbly. It still has a propensity, um, it still wants to fall over more than it wants to stay up. Um, so I think making these feet a bit bigger would have made it stand up better. Um, so that is my only tip, as I would say, is, you know, make your feet a bit longer. They don't even necessarily need to be triangles. They could just be squares. Um, so that I want it at this point in the time, we've decided to do rainbow mixes. Um, so I'm doing these new products, which is just, you know, um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and indigo. The indigo, guys, this isn't a, a total representation. I am going to pull a kind of um, a new rainbow indigo colour, which will be a standalone product as well um, this week and the violet. Um, so those you'll be able to get, which are lovely kind of mixes with the kind of um, the colors that can be used in a project like this or in any other project that you want. Um, so those are available. The other great news I want to share with you is that my friend Laurie at Wilderness Glass is going to be selling some of our products on Etsy. So for you guys in America, she'll be selling them in dollars and in ounces, um, a small range of our stuff. So check that out. Um, and you know, it's just Wilderness Glass uh, which is on Etsy. So have a look for that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this project. Uh, I'm loving seeing all your wonderful rainbows out there, people supporting the NHS. They're fantastic. Well done. And big round of applause to the NHS for all they're doing for you guys in England. Have to say the Croatian doctors are doing an amazing job here and looking after us. So we feel really happy and blessed to be here and being looked after so well as well. So stay safe out there, everyone. Keep healthy, keep doing your glass, keep having fun, and we'll see you again soon. And if you like this video, please subscribe.